Hello everyone, it is your host, Seth the Programmer, and with me today, I have my good old pal, Clyde, and today we're going to be talking about Ichigo versus the Akatsuki. Now, we're doing this video because we need more Bleach content on the channel. We have our magnum opus coming in, you know, we're making Ichigo versus Naruto fully animated and all that, and it's a little bit weird that I've been binge reading and watching and all of this stuff for Bleach, and I haven't made a single Bleach-related video really since Madara versus Aizen. So I decided to get the bleach guy, you know, Clyde on here. And how are you doing today, Clyde? I'm, I'm doing fantastic, Seth. Thank you for having me on the channel once again. So Seth and I have spent the past good two or three days. Uh, we we rewatched a heap of the fights from Bleach and also read through them too, so we could see if we could find any sort of things here and there. Seth also found something very interesting, which I'll talk about later on through the video, and that is uh, a few data book related things, which Bleach actually lacks. If you're a Bleach fan, you'll know that it's quite hard to find a lot of uh, feet and speed and DC related and stuff for Bleach because they just don't usually give it to us but Seth did find some very interesting data book related stuff and thanks to his friend who speaks fluent Japanese uh, we were able to get it translated so that's something to look forward to with this video but I'm super happy to be on because we do have Naruto versus Ichigo coming later on through the year we've been hyping it up for almost two whole years and uh, yeah a li little bit longer than we thought but it will be worth it guys so I hope uh, this video was a substitute for the time being because we haven't done any Bleach content so once again thanks for having me on. So as I hinted at the beginning of the video Clyde will be doing pretty much most of the Bleach stuff, and I will be doing just about all of the Naruto stuff, and after we kind of conjoin our opinions at the end, then you'll hear the response, but for now, we're going to kind of go over each meta one by one. Uh, we're only going to be going over power and speed very particularly right now, but once we do our outro after the stats are down, we'll talk more about hacks, teamwork, and what's going to happen with the characters. So without further ado, Clyde, take it away. To start off the scaling for Ichigo, I'd like to dedicate the beginning of this segment by quickly debunking two things in the scaling of Bleach that have become quite outdated and doesn't need to be used anymore when it comes to having Bleach and Versus matchups, it's just really silly at this stage. The first of those being Gein's Bunkai. In the anime and manga of Bleach, Gein spends the entire fight with Ichigo trolling him while talking in code. There's actually an interesting moment where Ichigo thinks he knows what Gein's Bunkai can do, but Gein distinctly says to himself in the monologue on the manga and in the anime that he is impressed by Ichigo's ability to come up with this hypothesis from the few encounters with the Bankai, though it is in fact incorrect. Many people use this to downplay Bleach characters in speed, though Gein later tells Aizen his sword isn't as fast as he said, nor is that even the sword's main ability. Surprisingly, people completely forget this Gein scene, which blows my mind because it happens during a very important moment in the story. It's almost impossible to miss. Not only does Gein explicitly say that that's not how his sword works, but we've seen better speed feats back in the Soul Society arc, where Ichigo can cut a majority of Byakuya's 100 million blades and blocks a weapon that has the power of 3 million Zanpakuto when it is in the process of executing an individual. And let's be real for a second, Ichigo is a 15 year old boy who only got his powers a few months ago. He went from being relative to humans in speed to relative to literal death gods in speed. The same way Gein's clapping analogy impresses the average fan of Bleach is the same way that it impressed Ichigo. The other thing I'd like to debunk really quick is this scan here which is from the Bleach official character book called Souls. Like lightning, Ichigo pressures Byakuya with godlike speed and attacks him at close range. The problem with using this statement is that this is the equivalent to some mythological wording from folklore that we even actually use in our real world throughout history where you'll see plenty of stories use phrases like godlike, lightning, or heavenly power, things along those nature, right? You know, it, it's just there to sound impressive. Now, the reason why using that data book scan, and especially the wording and taking it very hyper literal, the reason why it's silly is because later on, Byakuya blocks the attacks as shown in the data book itself, right? And Byakuya then doubles his own speed later on and still can't catch Ichigo. The reason they attach words like godlike or lightning or so on and so forth, like I just talked about before with actual IRL folklore is because it's meant to be impressive and this is the first showing of Ichigo's Bankai. On top of this, the lieutenants and captains themselves actually show better feats and for Ichigo to be only seen as lightning speed when Byakuya actually complements the speed of his Bankai would be just a tad ridiculous. Surprisingly enough though, light speed is actually the most consistent thing in the story of Bleach as even Shuhei Hisage is shown being able to dodge the Nagashion, a beam of light used to actually 
save hollows, meaning it spits it out of the sky as fast as possible to transport them back to Hueco Mondo if they're in danger, and is constantly referred to as light by even the head captain, who dismissively tells them not to bother trying to stop Aizen now after it covers Gein, Tosin, and himself. Nanao Issei is also able to tag x axis's light and refers to the attacks as light multiple times throughout the actual Viz translations, yet she has no Zanpakuto of her own and is probably weaker than the likes of Zenosusuke Kurumadani before she gets her royal family weapon, and she is without a doubt weaker than the likes of Shikai Ichigo from the Soul Society arc who has the power of around 3 million fodder Soul Reapers as said before, alongside the fact that Orihime can even react to Yuha attacks and block them. She was also shown in the Waco Mundo arc being able to tag some of Ukiura's attacks when he was trying to hurt Ichigo. And what's interesting about some of the things that she blocks is that these are attacks that are actually too fast for Ichigo to move out of the way. This is the same Ichigo who could blitz Quincy girls who were leagues above Lil Toto Lumpard and she was shown being able to use Hidden Kyaku to flash over, push another Quincy out of the way and dodge the Oshvalen Light. The Oshvalen Light is actually so fast that pretty much every single Quincy that it was aimed at was actually hit by the light itself. Even Baz B couldn't dodge the light and he was comparable to Shikai Yamamoto, Bankai Renji and even made Toshiro run away. He also blitzed the same Quincy girls Ichigo was fighting by one-shotting every single one of them and these are the same girls that were giving Kenpachi trouble after his fight with Gremi. To put it simple, any Soul Reaper around the rank of co-lieutenant level is most likely FTL quite casually and this is pretty crazy considering Nanal, Chad and Orihime are able to perceive movements from characters who are far above them and massively faster than light. Now, as for Ichigo's speed, however, Seth and I will talk about that at the end of the video, alongside many other FTL feats that you guys have definitely never heard of. To go over the Akatsuki speed, the speed of Naruto is ever evolving and honestly can have its own 30 minute video and still be missing some parts to it. And since we have a lot of things to go over, I'm going to keep this as brief as possible since we're probably going to go into more detail after we talk about the stats. There are three metas to Naruto's speed. One is that lightning timing is considered top tier in the verse for Jonin. Kakashi is a legend for cutting a lightning bolt. Kirin is considered insanely fast by Black Zetsu who literally made the shinobi world and the fourth right kage is stated to have lightning fast attacks in the data book two is the relativistic to light meta which is even if the fourth right kage was lowballed to lightning speed minato kcm naruto and other characters are able to blitz him by dozens of times these usually reach a few percentages of the speed of light due to such and this is usually accompanied by a ton of calculations and pixel scaling and so on the third is the light speed meta in which you can point to many things in naruto most specifically the data books that reference things as light such as mifune's bijou cloak slashes haku's ice mirrors darwi's laser circus which refracts off of water particles like light and even the right kage's lariat is described like light although it questionably contradicts the previous lightning statement. You could make arguments that the light meta contradicts a few things, such as Kakashi in the war getting blitzed by a supposedly light speed Haku, even though he should be able to keep up with a much faster than light Naruto using calcs. However, these aren't important for this video. For now, we'll just give everyone the benefit of the doubt and say that the Akatsuki, who scaled pretty prominently to Kakashi, Sage, Naruto, and so forth, would reach most of any of these metas, at least in reaction or combat speed, as Sage mode is described by Naruto himself himself as being faster than KCM in reaction speeds with Pain and Obito being able to fight them and the last time Naruto fought when Sage Mode was versus the Ninetales and versus Pain. When talking about Ichigo's destructive capacity or attack potency, it's honestly quite straightforward and simple. Hueco Mundo Ichigo, after his battle with Grimja, actually fights quite well against Ukiora. This is the same Ukiora who Grimja didn't want to fight to the point where he actually put him in a different dimension using the Kaha Nagashion. Now, to do this in short, every Espada is said to be able to destroy Los Noches with a Gron Rei Zero. This is a rule set by Aizen and directly stated by Ukiora. Sasuke Aizen being the one from a society of 1000 plus year olds 
world's super geniuses that are actually so intelligent that they can manipulate reality and life itself. These thousand year old entities would be more than capable to be able to calculate Ryatsu and basic physics when it comes to their own power. Aizen was even able to calculate the exact percentage of how weak his Kuruhitsugi was compared to what it could be at its max potential. Halibal's Fraxione even comment that Grimdia shouldn't have released his Grunray Zero against Ichigo while in his base form, and Ichigo then goes on to fight Grimdia in his release state where his power and speed increases 5 to 10 times, as Urahara compares them to Bonkai in strength, and the Aspartas themselves alongside their swords are meant to mimic Soul Reapers, and Taite Kubo describes them as a hollow parallel. Ukiora's base is then comparable to an Ichigo that's even stronger than this Grimdia, as Aizen states that he masters his holification in this fight, meaning Ukiora is without a doubt as strong as released Grim Gel. Now, Ukiora should easily be this strong, meaning he can destroy Los Noches 5 to 10 times over in his base form, and if he uses his own Grun Racero in base, this could mean that he could have a several times increase in strength, according to the data book which Seth actually found and translated himself. It should also be noted that Grim Gel in his release state actually has attacks that surpass his own Grun Racero, which he could use in his release state, yet Ichigo is able to handle these attacks and seems to be still relative to Ukiora. So this is how it works. Ukiora's base is 5 through 10 times Lost Noches in destructive capacity, times 5 through 10 once again on top of that with his first release, then another 5 through 10 times on top of that with his second release, and if Lost Noches is comparable to Texas, Thailand, and even a percentage of, say, Australia, which is a conclusion most reach, whether it's the scaling of Screw Attack, or even back when Seth and I rushed out Madara vs. Aizen video within the span of three days, or just, you know, goofy power scaling forums here and there all over the internet, they all come to a similar answer. So if we use Texas and Ukiora is 1000 times his base in his second release, he could easily destroy an area of 695 million squared kilometers. This is a very layman way to do it, but it works. Now Vasolode Ichigo absolutely stomps this second release Ukiora, and thanks to Seth's research, we found out that the Vaso Lorde has to be at least 10 times stronger than Ukiora because Ukiora can counter one of its normal Seros with Sero Oscuras. This is the only reason Ukiora even had a chance in the fight, because the data books directly state that Sero Oscuras increases its attack by an order of magnitude, orders of magnitude in physics and so forth being an order of 10. Therefore, it'd have to be at least 10 times greater than its normal power. This is consistent, considering Grand Ray Sero, which is stated to be several times greater, several being times three, and Ukiora introduces his Lanzada Relampago and Sero Oscuras as if they are more impressive. In conclusion, the Vaso Lorde can easily destroy an area 10 times that of the Ukiora Calc, which would be 6 billion 900 million squared kilometers. This also isn't even his max strength because the Vaso Lorde wasn't even at full power when he fought Ukiora, didn't use its own Grum Ray Cero, and it was easily able to crush and negate the Lanzada del Relampago, which Ukiora decides to use after his Seto Oscuras, Release Zeros and Black Zeros fail, meaning it's obviously a stronger technique as I said before. If we do include the fact that Ichigo can easily counter the Lanza del Relampago, place him at full power with a non ripshi Hakusho as seen in Ichigo's mind when he trains to beat Aizen, and he uses his own Gron Ray Cero, he is without a doubt 10 times 6 billion 900 million square kilometers, making him able to destroy or cover an area of 69 billion 500 million squared kilometers. This isn't wank either because the Hellverse movie even comments on how his normal Seros that covered multiple layers of Hell and blew open the doors of Hell would inadvertently have an impact on the entire planet. The Vasto Lorde is casually considered a planetary threat by even Yamamoto, who he himself can threaten all of the Soul Society while suppressed in the War Arc, which is actually a parallel world to the world of the living. For destructive capacity or attack potency, most calculations for the Akatsuki and their strongest jutsu tend to hit 10 to the 21 joules, which is usually considered enough to destroy small countries in terms of raw energy output. And many of those are highballed, like Daedra C0, including the shockwave of the blast in most calcs, which reaches 20 kilometers in the data book, in which they'll also add that that shockwave is actually how much it vaporizes to be generous. Some calcs even go balls to the wall and place 
Payne's Shibaku Tensei at over 10 to the 23 joules and place Payne's Shibaku Tensei at over 10 to the 23 joules of raw kinetic energy. I've even seen some try to place them at continental. Other than this, you have to make a lot of scaling assumptions to really get them higher, like finding ways to scale the cast of the later war art characters like the Ninetales who stated to be a threat to the entire planet numerous times in the data book. However, this doesn't really work in a lot of instances and the Ninetales tends to dominate any Akatsuki member it comes across, including the Chibaku Tensei, as well as the fact that stronger attacks like the C0 is tanked by Manda's body, the Sage Snake, who is rivaling more so a few tails of the version 2 Ninetailed cloak using Orochimaru, rather than the actual full-blooded Ninetales. At the absolute best, you might be able to get them to scale the Killer B, who in his 8 tail state could somehow fight against the incomplete 10 tails. However, it's hard to say exactly how strong it was as Naruto hadn't even fully mastered his link with Kurama. It was constantly low on stamina for a lot of that encounter. Giving the benefit of the doubt, you could say that the 8 tails might be able to rival the multi-continental attacks of the 10 tail that it could poop out, although we've all seen how in reality the 10 tails can kind of flick away anything the 8 tails can actually do. And even then, it's hard to scale the Akatsuki to Killer B anyway, as even Kisame, who actually fought him, one of the stronger members, never actually took on a full-powered B and was constantly draining his power from him, which would have made the gap close even further, which would be more so an amped Kisame, if anything. At best, you might be able to say Obito might scale to the Ninetales, since he could control it with his eyes when he was like 14, and that Minato thought that Naruto would need the Ninetales mastery, and even then it might be questionable if he stands a chance. Alright fellas, so I hope this Ichigo vs the Akatsuki video has uh, lived up to its expectations. We've been hyping it up for quite a while, it took a very long time to uh, make, but it has been worth the long wait itself. Seth, do you want to give them a general rundown of how this fight would actually go down? Because we've covered everything to do with the Akatsuki and Ichigo, but how would the fight actually go? After the whole little breakdowns we did, we briefly went over everything, and look, look how long the video's been, and <laughs> we still have so much more to go over. So even with this outro, we're still not going to be able to go over everything, so we're probably going to be making more Naruto versus Bleachverse uh, content in the future to kind of go over more details. But for now, I'll keep it brief. Stats and speed comparison. Speed wise, it's pretty, it's pretty contentious. It's like uh, you could argue both of these forces are reaching a similar 10 to the 21 joules of destructive output or attack potency at their strongest, or maybe more so uh, higher for Ichigo, especially using those Ukiyota calcs that Clyde presented earlier. And it's really should be noted that most of these attacks by the account that do reach these country quote-unquote as the versus community would like to label that it usually requires most of their more powerful attacks like Datara literally committing suicide pain giving himself like a brain hemorrhage <laughs> while he tries to like hold down the nine tails with this Chewbacca Tensei the Susano ripping Itachi's body apart things like that it's not necessarily casual whereas with Ichigo he's just doing it with every single attack he throws like a damn Dragon Ball character in speed like I said before it's depends on which meta you're using and you really really have to give them both the benefit of the doubt for them to reach those 10 through 100 times the speed of light ranges but they do both tend to reach near those areas if you highball the Akatsuki and you really give them the method of the doubt it's actually easier than it is for Ichigo because Ichigo requires more assumptions however the power difference is still there and obviously attack range and stamina goes in Ichigo's favor Ichigo has enough stamina to fight for months on end without stopping whereas the Akatsuki their strongest attacks to fight Ichigo with, they're really not doing a whole lot. So it doesn't really matter even if you did wank off the Akatsuki speed in that area. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Hellverse stuff is actually very important for this video because it really slaps into people's faces that the Vasto Lorde is planet level and Kubo takes things from the filler, the movies, and it kind of works in the same way when it comes to canonicity as Dragon Ball does where Toei and Pirot have sort of an influence over Bleach and Dragon Ball. They can sort of add things into the story with the movies. Kubo approves them if he dislikes some stuff he'll maybe comment on them here and there which is a thing people are going to bring up when it comes to the Hellverse movie but he is directly credited in the opening and the actual cover of the movie itself so we have no reason to distrust that and considering the fact that he does use stuff directly from the filler and the actual movie one and puts it into the manga it's like well mm, there's not really much to dispute here is there so you have Yamamoto confirming his planet level Ichigo is anywhere from 10 through 100 times the speed of light He's easily, you know, as I said, planet level once again, not looking too good, and that's pretty much it for the, the canon of the movie itself. Yeah, so canon is a very subjective and broad 
area of debate and once again could have its own video but in this case canon is just more so can it be used during the discussion there are obviously like particular definitions of canon which this wouldn't apply to however in this case it does apply i do believe and as clyde described now the reason we bring this up is obviously ichigo himself in that movie actually thought that his hollow form was enough to destroy the whole world and yamamoto actually credits ichigo for cutting something that everyone thought was uncuttable yamamoto being a being who is so powerful he can destroy the planet by standing there believes they were uncuttable as well so that is also something to think about now even if you do just say like ah maybe that's too vague and ichigo does get offed there's obviously the war arc ichigo which his base form is rivaling his vasto lorde state pretty casually at least in the statement of yuha and then he can multiply all his stats by over 30 times using a bankai which is 10 times and then obviously his several fold multiplier of his grand raceros and then obviously his speed would go up by 10 times as well and there's just really no way for the akatsuki to reach those levels if it was war arc and you would really have to just deny ichigo's vasto lorde lore now other than that there are hacks the akatsuki have like sas Sorry's poison, which I will hand over to Clyde for that one. Now, I know a lot of Naruto fans are going to bring up the idea that, well, if they work as a quote team, we've all heard the, we've all heard the meme of, you know, the teamwork stuff, uh, they could probably poison Ichigo and then he just gets negged from that because there's nothing he can do. Well, sadly, when Seth and I went through Bleach once again, we noticed that uh, if you have high enough Ryatsu, you can negate poisons because Yami does it to a Fruxion who covers his body with this poison that can actually erode concrete. Also, uh, Ichigo is able to fight against Gein, who Gein's Bankai, it stated that his actual poison can erode cells when he gets clipped by the bonkai itself he explains this to eisen but ichigo does get stabbed by the bonkai and yet he doesn't take any damage from the poison so it's not looking too good when it comes to that so i wouldn't have too much confidence in poison if i were you guys personally i don't believe that gein's poison touched ichigo but that is something to consider that it might have brazed him when it went by but the fraction's poison being so strong it dissolves concrete is a little bit different than sasori's poison which probably just attacks like via proteins and the body um and if they could tank that much more potent physical poison i don't really see any evidence that sasori's would work now other than that there is Datara's c0 bombs now in this debate we are obviously saying okay the akatsuki can see ichigo otherwise they're fighting an invisible spirit man that they don't even know exists now you could say that chakra is spiritual in nature and therefore they can sense Ichigo. However, if you grant that benefit of the doubt to the Akatsuki, then Ichigo can see Chakra because Chakra is spiritual in nature as well. If you're linking one thing, you have to link the other. And in this case, Ichigo would be able to see the bombs. And then there's even the argument, would it affect Ichigo regardless? I mean, it didn't even rip apart Manda's body. And Manda is considered weaker than Orochimaru if he had his arms. And as well as the fact that Manda is and Orochimaru are more so rivaling Naruto with a few tails of the version 2 Ninetales cloak, not anywhere close to the full thing. So it's really, once again, hard to argue that it would do anything. Now, next there's Pain and Zetsu. Now, Pain and Zetsu and Obito, they do kind of scale to that late war era. Uh, if you use the fact that Pain was sealing away the Ninetales, there's more arguments than that, but just keeping it brief. He is able to maybe, like, hold down the eight tails of the Ninetales, which is pretty considerable since it's a planet buster in its full state. Zetsu, who is so powerful that he was able to amp Obito to fight late war Kakashi, uh, Minato, and a lesser Zetsu was able to hold off the whole Shinobi alliance. So these two characters, once again, even if they do beat Vasto Lorde, they're getting negged once again by war arc ichigo they do not have the same realm busting or speed feats to really compete with that unfortunately next is itachi's genjutsu itachi's genjutsu unfortunately while it may work on a jinshuriki as implied by naruto uh, with his sukuyomi at least there's no evidence that it would work on ichigo who has two spirits and both of those spirits are more than likely more powerful than the bijou within a jinshuriki especially a lesser jinshuriki not even the nine tails jinshuriki this this would also apply to Obito, who has a Koto Amatsukami like Genjutsu he placed on Yagura. So, the problem with those theories is that obviously the Genjutsu placed on Yagura, or if it was placed on the Eight Tails, would not be nearly the same as if it was placed on the Nine Tails, as we've seen even Madara Uchiha in his battle with Hashirama or Obito versus Minato. Minato states, if he's anything like Madara, he cannot hold the Nine Tails for very long in his Genjutsu. And it is known throughout the land that holding the Nine Tails in a Genjutsu is insanely difficult despite the fact that the tail beasts are constantly put under genjutsu including the eight tails who's put under genjutsu by orochimaru at least in filler and he doesn't even have a sharingan and then obviously there's the totsuka blade 
and I'll let Clyde go for that one. Now, as for the Tosca Blade, it's um, it's a little bit weird because a lot of people could say that it kind of works the same way as Zumpak Toes do in Bleach, so it may not even affect Ichigo for that matter. Or we could even make the argument that he's even too quick to even be hit by the thing. And if they, if the Akatsuki themselves are to seal Ichigo with a with a slash where Itachi's already you know in pain from using the Susano itself, it isn't looking too good. And on top of that, it uh, it isn't really a fair thing to say that it could exactly cut just anybody because that would be a quote no limits fallacy considering that Kakashi's lightning blade has actually stated that uh, Kakashi's arm becomes a famous blade that can cut through anything through anything so if we were to wank the Tosca blade uh, it's it, it is a bit unfair to, to give it that much credit I just don't think it's going to be as handy as a lot of people are going to say in this battle and on top of that like even just hitting Ichigo alone is going to be too much trouble yeah obviously the Tosca blade it attacks things you have to stab them for it to seal not even just cut however obviously when it comes to the Warrock Ichigo you have to prove Itachi's that fast and then you have to prove once again that it actually has the power required to cut someone on that level you can't just have a no limits fallacy where you can just cut through absolutely everything especially in a verse like bleach where hacks are negated by raw power uh, and obviously it goes back to kakashi and kakashi's a character who couldn't even he couldn't even cut through like most of the version two jinchuriki he did cut through a lot of them however there are many instances where it was more like a, he was throwing a hard punch like next to guy so it is a little bit weird to use that comparison and that also goes back to hidan ichigo has a zanpak toe which is a soul cutter and it actually attacks you on a spiritual level so if ichigo were to annihilate or fully attack hidan who does not have the durability to withstand any of his attacks, Hidon is not getting up from it. His soul will be annihilated and his body will be vaporized. Even if he was immortal, we have seen that Hidon's body isn't like Majin Buu where it re like recovers or like regenerates itself instantly. He has to have Kakuzu put back on his head and stuff like that. So if his body is like atomized or he's just completely removed from existence, which Quincy's are actually able to remove people from existence, let alone Ichigo, who also has Quincy powers, it's not looking good for Hidon. Same would go for Kakuzu and Conan. Uh, uh, they aren't really doing much either, especially since they're raw power based fighters and Ichigo has more raw power and months more stamina than they do. Yeah, just quick, uh, Conan's Modern Warfare 2 Claymore setup ain't doing sh She's a filler character in this fight. And finally, just one more thing to mention is that a lot of people will say, just like the Tusker Blade, well, what if Ichigo gets thrown in Obito's Kamui dimension? Well, there are some big issues that Obito has, and that's that not only can Hollows, especially at the level of Ukyo and above, which Ichigo absolutely is in the Waco Mundo saga, let alone the, uh, the war arc okay? He can literally just break out of a dimension, and he can also open up the Nagashion, which Hollows can do. They can just open up a portal and leave. Uh, if you want to wank Ichigo's Shinigami form, I don't even know if he can do this, but he could technically open up the Senkai Mon and leave, so he's got, like, three options there. Maybe two if, you know, two at best, but still, yeah, there's nothing that Obito can do to him either, so not looking too good. Once again, at the end of the day, Ichigo is more of a rival to the Akatsuki and his Espada arc. I don't care if you think the Akatsuki beats Espada arc Ichigo, if you think Espada arc Ichigo beats the Akatsuki. I just want us all to universally agree the war arc would slap which of course we'll be going into more detail in naruto versus ichigo and other than that speaking of naruto if you guys want to see a naruto versus the espada maybe we can go over which arcs of naruto compare to the espada then hit, hit us up we'll gladly do that as well and in the meantime check out madara versus the akatsuki if you're looking for more inverse scaling and until next time